going on Twitch chat and YouTube vintage challenge time uh, in front of me you can see paradoxical outcome build number 40 <laughs> that's not how many builds I've made that's how many builds I've downloaded uh, pretty fun one uh, we're gonna go play some jewel shops today I really like CFT socks approach to this deck uh, CFT sock is the mox winner for legacy this year and like one, I think one of the best deck builders on the entire on the entire platform. Um, they won the Legacy Mox Showcase Qualifier with a Hornet Queen in their deck. So um, this is pretty much their build. There are a couple tweaks here and there, um, but basically the main way that this build differs from other Jewel Shops builds is it plays the Moon Silver Key, which is a card that I really liked inside of KCI. Um, but what this card enables you to do is have you know an additional two copies of Coveted Jewel. Obviously, it has utility besides that. Uh, but the main thing here is you have two more copies of Coveted Jewel. And then it's playing Antiquities War, which is a blue card for Force, because your blue count is always a little low. Uh, but it also looks for an artifact and puts it in your hand. So you have another way to find Coveted Jewel. Um, so, you know, you have pseudo eight copies of Coveted Jewel here instead of, you know, maybe four, uh, which makes this, I think, a better take on the archetype than some of the other ones I've tried in the past. I am trying a Cyber, Cyber Drive Awakener. It tested pretty well the last couple times I played with it. The it has a similar thing to the third part of Antiquities War, but it happens right away. Um, it also is castable off of Workshop, which is an interesting, you know, subplot here. It's possible that this card should just be another Antiquities War, so we have more ways to find Jewel, but I figured out we'd, we would try it in here. Um... Not much else is, is different from typical lists. I have Dismembers for Collector Roof, some extra counter spells. Uh, I am playing a Tinker of Blight Steel. I just think it's nice to have uh, that in, in a matchup where maybe we're playing against, I don't know, something that's restricting our ability to combo. I don't know, an Archon. Maybe not an Archon, but something along that variety. Uh, and then you should have a nice Karn Artifact Suite. Uh, got a boat to kill Collector Roofs. It's a pretty straightforward list. Um... All in all, the big thing here is like I really like the idea of Moon Silver Key as additional jewels, and I like the, I don't know if I like the idea of Antiquities War. I like the premise of Antiquities War. I'm not sure how well Antiquities War plays, um, but the idea that you know it finds artifacts for your PO and finds you jewels and maybe is a kill condition, uh, you know, it's pretty castable off of uh, Grim Monolith. So we're gonna see how it goes. Exciting news, everyone. I've just launched a new Patreon. There, you can show support for my content, grab additional weekly metagame recommendations, and even submit a donation deck list. Donation deck lists are the most frequently asked question on my channel, and I feel I am now ready to support this new content. Please check out the rules for submissions on the Patreon link in the description, and thank you for your continued support of my channel. Let's battle. All right, here we go. We got Millhouse, round one. Uh, my hand does not have a turn one jewel. It has a turn two jewel, but with mana, that is going to go uh, one time use. I don't know. This hand makes me feel not great, so I, I don't think this is a keep. I want a hand that is producing a powerful turn one play if possible. If not possible, maybe having force backup. This this hand just makes me feel like even especially on the draw on the play maybe this is more justifiable, but I'm gonna mulligan this hand. Uh, yeah, I mean this is clearly much better. We can put away this moon silver key, and then we're looking at mana vault opal mono. What is this? This is oh my god. <laughs> Who's playing Squee, and why do I have to play against it? God damn it. Okay. Um, that's got to be one of the most unfortunate matchups. Uh, Squee is a deck that is extremely good against combo, uh, and especially combo that is not interacting with Bizarre Baghdad. Uh, Squee is a deck that's hard to play um, because it's in the, hard to play in the meta because it's very weak to Wasteland, and 60% of decks in the format have Wastelands. Um, but... They're on the four cards. Maybe we have a chance. The problem is they play four Force of Negation, four Force of Will, four Force of Vigor, and four Mind Break Trap. 
which means I, I'm not allowed to play magic. That's an interesting draw, though. So how much mana do I have? If I were to go Urza Saga, Mana Vault, one extra mana, Cro Grim Monolith, uh, four mana, five mana, I'm one mana short of a jewel. Hmm. I think it's kind of imperative we have a force backup. Like, we can turn one Tinker, but I just don't think it's going to work. <laughs> what is, like, the likelihood of resolving a turn one Tinker with no force backup against uh, uh, this deck? It's got to be extremely infinitesimally small, right? And even if you do resolve it, you still have to deal with Vigor. They did lose a force of will and a force of negation. The other problem with going for Tinker is that it's going to use my one-time artifacts here, basically. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Mana Vault, Coveted Jewel... Or, sorry, I'm going to play Mana Vault, Opal. I want to play Opal because I want to play around Mindbreak Trap. And I'm going to pass. Um, this way, I have a Force for a Vigor. And then I can draw a blue card and Tinker, or I can just Coveted Jewel with Force back up. They only, you know, gained one extra card because they didn't have any squeeze in their yard. We might take some damage, but this deck is notably not a Bolas of Citadel deck. Um, when you tinker, you're tinkering for Coveted Jewel. I also made it so we can tinker for um, Cyber Diver Awakener as a way to win the game on spot, but... Okay, so my opponent pitched Force of Will, Force of Negation, Wasteland, and then played Wasteland. What does that mean? Does that mean they have, like... Vigor, Mindbreak Trap. They only have three cards left in their hand. Um, I'd like to just draw a blue card and Tinker. I guess that's fine. So actually, is this fine? So it, I go up to exactly six, right? So I have four mana. I go down to two mana. I go up to... Yeah, okay. All right. Well, we're going for it. If, it, if we don't win the game on this turn, that's also a problem, because my opponent can Venge Vine and steal my Coveted Jewel, but... The game doesn't exactly get better by waiting, so... Okay, so what did they keep in their hand if they pitched Force of Will, Force of Negation? Maybe they kept, like, one Root Walla to try to trigger Venge Vines or something? I'm not really sure. Okay, well now I can uh, Tinker away a mana vault and grab a another jewel this is pretty dicey still what if i just put a trinisphere in play oh what about that can we lose wow i didn't ever thought about this can we lose this game if we put a trinisphere in play I don't think we can't. Right, I'm going to do that. Your move. Bizarre player. <laughs> that was cool. I've never done that before. Or maybe I have, but I don't remember. But that was cool. I will take a game one win against that deck anytime because I don't know how we're beating this deck. Oh, my Lord. We just have to, to get real lucky, I think. Because I, I do think it's pretty abysmal matchup. We're going to bring in... Are we going to bring in Tormod's Crypt? Is that even good? None of these cards are really great. Like, I want this Needle. And I want this Defense Grid. And maybe I want this Blight Steel. Um, but I don't think I want Tormod's Crypt or Graph Digger's Cape. Maybe I have to play Tormod's Crypt. Um, yeah. I did... What do you take out of this deck? Uh, how the hell do I board? I actually like Cyber Drive Awakener as a non-negating, non-negatable card. Um, like we can't just cut all blue cards and like have no ability to force, but. We also are a really bad force deck. Maybe we could just... What if we just cut... Well, we can't just cut forces, right? Like, they have Vigor. We can't just cut forces. Maybe we cut Vault Key, actually. What about, what about Vault Key? 
that kind of feels like more something that makes sense to me. Like this or something like that. No, I think... I don't like that. That feels reasonable. No, Moon Silver Key is our um, additional copies of Covered Jewel. It's hard for us to win without a Covered Jewel. I don't think we're allowed to cut that. I don't think we need Vault Key here. Yeah, I like this. I like somewhere in between. Let's try that. Okay, what do we got? Okay. Yeah, I mean, this this vibes. It's a little slow, but it has power. Okay, so they have the turn one vine. We have no tabernacles in our deck, so we kind of have to do the winning. Uh, 16... 13. <sighs> I think I'm just going to take the damage and play an ancestral. I could copy a vine, but I think we need Metamorph to pitch to force. Mm. <laughs> Triple squee. Okay. Three cards in hand. All right. What do we need? Uh, They pitched a vigor. Um, what do we need? What do we need? What do we need? What do we need? We need like a black lotus. Maybe you know we need we actually don't need that much. We have three, four, five. So we just need a moxin, really. Grim monolith, anything like that. Okay. Well, if they have a counter spell plus mind break trap, we lose. But if they have just one piece of interaction, we get to play magic. They have Mind Break Trap, okay. We have Force 2. Second Mind Break Trap, maybe. I mean, this is not winning. I have, I have no way to win right now, but... Um, so I think we're dead here because... Well, we can hit... Is there a Time Walk in our deck? I guess we can hit Time Walk. Kind of it. We could, I guess we could, yeah, blind top into Tinker as well. I guess we have blind top into Metamorph, so that's probably better. It's probably more likely we blind into three Metamorphs, one Tinker, than we do spin into exactly Time Walk. That's no good. Uh, okay, we didn't get there. Not terrible, though. I could have maybe made a mistake in playing this Ancestral, but... Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, pretty close to one of the top tier uh, draws from that deck, so I'm not too worried about it. Doesn't get much better than that. Okay, what do we got? Okay. I mean, yeah, the sand looks fine. Uh, okay. Sand looks quite good. We actually don't have to tinker right away. We can go straight for a jewel.
Like we just have had force of will backup for our thing every single time, which is actually really amazing. It's not super likely to have force of will backup plus, you know, like fast play, but we've had it. So I have Tinker Blightsteel, right? Which makes me want to just go workshop coveted jewel with force backup. Maybe, I mean, they have four force four negation. Maybe we just tinker. The problem with tinkering is if we lose, we don't actually get to play our jewel on the next turn unless we draw Moxin or something. I'm worried that they let Jewel resolve. We can't win the game and they steal it. Maybe stealing. Hmm. Hmm. This also like exposes our Academy to a wasteland if we play Academy this turn. But Tinker Blight Steel is great because you only lose to double force. They have to have exactly double force. I agree. I agree. I agree. I think it makes sense, honestly. I think having making them have double force is just it's got to be good. Or for snapback, sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't care about snapback. Snapback is whatever. That resolved. All right. I'm putting a Blight Steel in play. Your move opponent. <sighs> Interesting. I, uh, I would be very happy if my Blight Steel sideboard change ends up working out for us here. Let's go! <laughs> I don't think I don't think you understand how much it means to win against Squee. I fucking hate Squee. <laughs> that deck is so hard to beat when you don't have Wasteland. Oh, we just got there. I'll take it. I'll absolutely take it. We had some really, really nice hands. I have to admit, like, we've had some Tinker Force backup hands, and that's just not a thing you can expect from this deck. So big win. All right, here we go. Round two. We got a a, a combo match. A face off. We're playing against Sandy Dog, who has been playing a lot of oops all spells. This hand uh kills them. Which I like. So I'm gonna keep it. Oh my god. <laughs> what a hand. Um I wonder if we're supposed to time walk first. Probably, right? Just get one extra card. So then we go Tinker for Jewel. Yeah, we've had some just ridiculous hands. Just really, really crazy hands today. Um, Man. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Opal, Ruby, Crypt, Heimwalk, Untap. If I don't draw anything that matters, we'll Tinker for a Jewel. If not, we'll just play Jewel. If we like, if we draw like a Mistress Workshop, we'll just play Jewel. Yeah, I don't know. It's like it's like two all in, right? If we like, we can do that. We can go Time Vault, Time Walk. I mean, I guess we are going to play Time Vault, Time Walk. Um, we are going to do that because we were going to Time Walk anyways. But I'm not convinced that we're going to just tinker for the win because it puts us like, well, I mean, maybe if we're sacking Ruby, it's fine. Hmm. 
I don't know. Like, we have the ability to play somewhat conservatively here, but... Yeah, but I'm saying, like, there's a possibility that we don't have to tinker, right? Because we can draw we can draw mana for, uh, for Jewel. My opponent F6, though, so we're probably going to murder them. All right, I didn't get enough mana for Jewel, so we're just going to try murdering them. Oh, I probably shouldn't have sacked the uh, <laughs> Mana Crypt is going to put it farther away from Jewel. That was bad. But it does mean that we actually guaranteed lethal here, so... Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I probably am actually supposed to leave Mana, uh, mana Crypt because if my opponent did, for some reason, have a counterspell, that would mean we are only two mana away from Jewel. What deck am I playing? Uh, sure. <sighs> uh, Sandy didn't want to sit through it, but wanted to know what I was playing. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, man. Could just go look at my Twitch VOD, so might as well just tell him. Uh, all right, so we're playing against probably oops all spells. I'm going to bring in Force of Negation. Uh, I, I think it's extremely likely we're playing against oops all spells. Like, there are some, like, other cards, like, usually something in the combo realm is, is what Sandy's going to be doing. So I'm just going to bring in Negations, and that's probably it. And then what am I taking out? That's an interesting question. What am I taking out? Maybe, like, we take out Cyber Drive Awakener. Doesn't feel like that's what we need to do here. And maybe we take out... I don't know. 60 Basics? That's true. That is within range. <laughs> we fired a prelim the other day, and Sandy ac accidentally registered 60 Basics, which is unfortunate and hilarious. Uh, man, I really don't know. Maybe it's just Antiquities War. I kind of like the idea of keeping more blue cards in so that we have a higher chance of forcing their turn one kill. Oh, we're probably supposed to bring in Needle, too. I didn't really think about that. Maybe we don't want Trinisphere on the draw. That could be reasonable here. And then maybe we just don't need this top either. That kind of feels fine. Yeah, so we'll bring in some counter spells and we'll bring in a needle for um, Char Belcher and Undercity Informer. Gotta love a Jewel Shops video. It'll be like one hour long. Play six play six rounds, one hour of uh, content. <laughs> five minute game, five minute game, five minute game. Uh oh no, not like this. Man. Am I allowed to keep this hand against oops all spells? Probably. I probably just take the L if they turn one kill me. I, I feel like I should just take the L if they turn one kill me. Mm. Man, I don't know. I feel like that's dumb though. I, I it, it feels really dumb to mulligan a hand that has Ancestral in this much mana, but I just don't know if... I don't really think I'm allowed to keep this hand versus oops. Like, the percentage chance oops turn ones me is really high. And I have six forces in my deck. I'm just, like, worried. I don't know. I could be stupid, but I think I'm supposed to mulligan this. On the draw versus oops. Uh, -huh. yeah. This is fine. I think what we'll do is we'll put Jewel on the bottom, and then we'll just try to draw into PO on turn one, uh, and we have Force. So I, I like this hand. 
much more. I like this hand much, much more than my last hand, which is weird because the last hand was like more powerful, right? But I think having access to Force of Will is pretty important here. We have a lot of draws here too, which is nice. Like we can draw Grim Monolith and it's good. Um, like basically uh, any of these artifacts are really good draws. Everything else is like not great, but like Force is still pretty good. Um, it's not bad. We'll see if I get paid off for... Uh, I mean, t technically the other hand didn't actually have something to do with the mana, but... It was, you know, it had Ancestral, so it was pretty likely, right? Four cards to look at to find something to do with all the mana, but it just doesn't feel like when you play against Oops, that's a reasonable keep. All right, come back, Sandy. I, I chose my mulligan. <laughs> oh, they're also playing the uh, Super PTQ or Super RCQ. Makes sense. Knowing Sandy might also be playing a an arena thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a fun deck list. It's um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, CFT sock, um, jewel shops, but I'm pretty happy with what the deck is aiming to do. I actually think I definitely prefer this deck over something like the Ancient Tomb PO deck that Thomas, uh, Tom De Decker was using. It's a, kind of a similar vein where, I mean, that one is like leaning, it's a, it's an axis, right? You've got Oops All Spells at one end, and you have Esper Tinker Saga on the other end, and they, all the other Tinker decks fall somewhere in between. Um, and this is obviously much closer to Oops All Spells. Uh, Sandy kept six, and I'm going to bottom this jewel. I like how my hand doesn't actually do anything, which is fun. Uh... Yeah, Lotus Petal. Four cards left in hand. Is this going to be Dark Ritual? Mana Vault. Okay. Yeah, sure. Why not? I'll take 250. <laughs> All right. I have Force. Pitching P.O. If they have Force Backup, they have Force Backup anyway. Okay, so they have Packed Backup. So, uh, unfortunately, our Force didn't matter, but I kind of feel justified in my, my play. Not much I can really do about this. Just going to make sure they have the combo. Uh, I see two therapies, a dread return, and a Thassa's Oracle. Okay. Yep. That soups all spells. Not much I can do about that. Uh, let's definitely bring Trinisphere back in on the play. And then maybe we do want this cage. Kind of an interesting idea. Maybe we do want just like Cage and Cormod Script. I wish I had kind of maybe... Like they're not that good on the... Mm. Yeah, maybe we do want that kind of stuff. It's tough though. I don't want to like get rid of like all my combo stuff. But maybe we are on the more controlling end of this. We could trim like a key and a monolith. And a... Well, maybe we just trim Volt Key actually. Doesn't really seem necessary. Yeah, I mean, that's oops all spells, right? It's you go for the turn one kill. Certainly a powerful proponent of, or a powerful recipient for the London Mulligan. Um, the addition of these lands really helped the Seagate Restoration and the Awakening Black One. Certainly made that deck much, much stronger.
Yeah, on the play, the cage and the crypt get like a lot better, right? So maybe it made sense somewhat to not have them in in the last game, but. Yeah, oops, all spells is pretty much as far as you can lean into the like super big blue combo deck. This deck is like the next step from there where you actually, you know, can play magic outside of your combo. Um, and then you probably see something like maybe PO is the next step up, and then Esper Saga at the top end of the more controlling Tinker decks. But. Yeah, like, I don't think Antiquities War is good here, but I think I want as many blue cards as I can fit into my deck so that I have a higher chance of being able to force. I think that is, like, a reasonable logic. And then, because I'm on the play, these Cage and Tormod scripts should actually be quite good. So we're up to 20 blue cards, which is pretty reasonable. But, like, this this Trinisphere is obviously going to be super strong against them. And then Cage and Crypt should be reasonable. Because they can't just go for the combo. They have to deal with the Crypt and the Cage. Obviously, they have Char Belchers in their deck. Um, so it's not like they have nothing if they get Caged or Crypt. But at least shuts out, you know, uh, the higher percentage of their combos stuff. Main board Mind Break. Uh, don't tell me these things. I don't want to know. I want to hear it. I want to <laughs> ignore Mind Break and act like it never happened. All right, let's play another two minute game on the play. Oops, all spells. Our hand is Garbo. Our hand is just not good. This hand is good though. Um, this hand is quite good. We have Tormod's Crypt and we have a clock with Saga and we have a force backup. So I actually think I'm going to mulligan the Mana Crypt here, which is really, really interesting. Um, because that way I can actually hard cast Negation. Though I guess if my opponent forces Tormod's Crypt, where does that leave us? It's probably still... What if I... Mm. Yeah, I mean, I like this hand, I think. We're, it's kind of weird because we're playing the control deck in one of the most absolute degenerate combo decks in the format. <laughs> but we're the control deck in this matchup because our opponent is taking it to the highest degree. Which is pretty funny. But I like this. Um, I do think this... I do think I'm going to mulligan or put the Mana Crypt to the bottom... And that way we can have hard cast negation. And that way, if we draw another blue card, we'll have another force backup, right? I like that a lot. I like this hand. This is a hand where Saga really looks strong. Um, we have, you know, blue mana outside of Saga. We are playing a control deck where we want to not tap out and cast counter spells and at end of turn make uh, constructs. Really nice Saga hand. Especially because our opponent doesn't interact with Saga. The way they interact with Saga is by racing Saga. So Normally Saga not very good in this matchup. But in this hand on the play it should be pretty good. Because if we can stop a first couple attacks from them. We can then have our Saga turn into a needle on Char Belcher. And then we're really well covered. Um, well, it kind of depends. I talk about this a bit. I have a video coming on Monday. It's an it's an hour long video essay about Urza Saga, and I actually think it it went pretty well. Um, but one of the things I talk about in it is like what Urza Saga has done to the meta game. Um, people have different criteria for uh, what ban and restriction means for them and how they would use ban and restriction. For me uh, personally, I think ban and restriction is just, should be used for balancing only. And right now, Vintage is extremely balanced. There are no like decks that are outside the norm and when a deck does get high like you know 55 percent win rate or something uh it doesn't stay that way for very long because the metagame is able to adapt um and no matter what the top deck is the metagame has been able to adapt for the last two years or so um so you can actually say that vintage is like super super balanced right now one of the most balanced formats in magic there will be people who tell you that it's like not super healthy right now um which is just a very uh it's hard to quantify very subjective opinion um 
the format I would say has sped up because of Urza Saga, which is obviously a really interesting talking point because Urza Saga is not a fast card. Um, but one of the more efficient ways to beat Saga is to ignore Saga. Um, so the with um, with Oops All Spells seeing like very high priority, right? The format has has definitely sped sped up a bit. Uh, and people will tell you that you know maybe they don't like that as much. Um, and, and certainly, uh, like I, what what I say is you could definitely make arguments that it's not um, you know the speed isn't healthy, right? Uh, you also have, like kind of seeing the all counter spell control decks are not super viable, which I think is not a horrible thing. I I really hated when Just Guy was the best deck. It was not fun for me. Uh, but obviously that's a personal opinion as well. One thing you have to say is like Urza Saga is an interactive card. It is a card that promotes like onboard one for one removal and killing creatures and attacking. So like the card itself is both interactive and probably and it is interactive, right? So I honestly think that a lot of Vintage's problems would be like problems, like question problems in quotation marks. Um a lot of vintages, you know, the, the problem people have with vintage would be pretty solved if you didn't have Bolas Citadel in, in the in the metagame, actually. Uh, I think that is, like, a really big contributing factor to the amount of non-games in the format. I really dislike Tinker Citadel at this point in time. I think I've just, I'm over it. It was cool. It was definitely cool the first couple of times you ever did it, right? Um, but I don't know. I'm pretty over Tinker Citadel. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of the rundown. Like, I don't think there's like, I, I think there is absolutely zero justification for any kind of changes to the format based on balance. Uh, but you can actually absolutely make arguments based on format speed, maybe. But, like, trying to argue that Vintage is too fast is kind of silly because it's Vintage. It's going to be the fastest format, right? Vintage is the non-game format is, like, not an opinion I share. I don't really agree with that. Yeah, I mean, uh, Blade Steel and Sphinx of the Steel Wind and cards like that uh, not only don't kill on the same turn, but they have, like, a variety of things that answer them, right? The problem is turning Tinker into an Oops, I Win card on the same turn, right? That's what, that's what, that's the real issue. And that's, like, entirely Citadel's fault. <laughs> um, like, Tinkering for a Vault Key is way, way less, like, the vault key tinker existed for a while and it wasn't super good all right so sandy is back let's battle i'm going to bottom this mana crypt i don't hope i don't regret it uh i'm going to lead crypt and see what they do are they gonna force tormod's crypt is the biggest question here if they force tormod's crypt am i supposed to force back that's another big question God, I don't really want to force back, right? Maybe I should have taken Mana Crypt and bottomed Opal. For this reason, if I had to force back on Tormod's Crypt. It just didn't feel like at the time that forcing back a Tormod's Crypt here makes sense. I don't know. I don't know. I did, how could we go like 20 minutes? Like, we we were we spent 10 minutes talking and I didn't even think about am I supposed to force back if they force Stormbot script? Probably not. Though maybe because forcing back on my turn means they can't pact of negation, right? So I'm probably am supposed to force back, which is super weird. Force of it's kind of interesting. Pact of negation is kind of pact of negation is pretty similar to force of negation. Where <laughs> oh wait, it's the opposite. No, 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 it's wait, is it the opposite? It's the opposite where force of negation is good on their turn and pact of negation is good on your turn. 
Yeah. Unfortunately, this game has gone on like this game could have probably been over in 10 minutes tops. All three mat, all three games of this match could have been over in 10 minutes, but uh, Brandon's playing a couple other matches or at least at least a PTQ. So I understand, but I am sad. It's OK. I got to talk to chat. Not the end of the world, right? Something you sign up for when you play some MTGO. Yeah, so I actually do think if my opponent forces this Tormod script, I would force back and I'll be sad about it. Like, if I get end up getting Char Belcher, then that sucks, right? But... Okay. So now I have Hard Cast Negation, I have saga active and i have tormod's creed to be tormod's crypt to beat the graveyard i feel like we're in a great spot all i could really hope for here is another blue card so that i have double force that's all i really am asking for time walk our best draw well i mean we have to make it to the next turn that is something we have to do my opponent could easily have you know uh, Char Belcher, seven mana counter spell, like Tack of Negation. Am I supposed to hit this? I feel like I am. I'm lucky my opponent had to use blue card on their Chrome Box. Oh, they could have played that and played around, maybe? Mm. Alright, blue card is my best draw for sure. Oh man, my land that's a blue card. You love to see it. All right. So now I can make a make two constructs with force backup and then get a needle on Char Belcher and I feel like we're in a great spot. Yeah, hey, what's going on, Senpai? Is this Tinker? Oh god, do they have Tinker with I mean, if they have Tinker for Citadel with pack backup How much I can do about that? All right, they didn't have backup. Holy sh! I feel, I feel. Why do I feel so lucky? <laughs> why, why do I feel so lucky? <laughs> I, I, I feel like I shouldn't have to feel lucky after this, but oh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, if I get mana crypt here and cast Po, is that better than making a construct and getting a needle? Well, they can brick. They have Force of Will and Fluster, right? Um, I don't know the answer to this question. How much are we POing for? We're POing for four? <sighs> I think I'm going to not do it. No, no, no. I'm not going to get a cage. I'm going to get a needle on Char Belcher. I think that's better than a cage because they've already used Tinker. I think Needle on Char Belcher is better. Well, uh, yeah, I think I just want to Needle Char Belcher. I, I mean, there's definitely nice parts about having double backup on the graveyard and on... Uh, oh, wait, this is a two-turn clock? No, it's not. If I hit a, mo a Moxin, if I hit a, uh, an Artifact, it's a two-turn clock. So that's pretty important, too. It's pretty hard for them to actually deal with like a Tormod script, so I think it makes more sense to cover the other side. And so like if they were able to beat my Tormod script and get a uh like a um a spy or something, then I think that's just how it should be. Or not how it should be, but like that's just what it is. I think it's better than getting a cage. No, 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 it's not Vigor. They have to have, like, Chain of Vapor. That's that's kind of it, I think. I, we lucked out, because they didn't have Force Backup for Tinker. Because for Tinker, they could have gotten uh, uh, either Char Belcher or Citadel, and it would have been bad for us. Okay, so we do need to hit a Moxin or um, a Monolith or something to make this a lethal attack, but... 
not too bad. I don't think we're like out of the woods yet by any means. They could also play a jump blocker here, pay three life and play a, a Undercity Informer. Okay. All right, so we're just looking for artifact that we can cast. That's not a Mox Opal. <laughs> All right, dope. I, I feel like we drew really well this game. We kind of drew exactly what we needed at every point. I, I don't know. We're running very hot today. We are running very, very hot today. All right, 2-0 bracket. Powerful wizard time. Uh, I'm going to suspect Esper Tinker, but they have a what, pretty decent range here. Uh, this is a hand that makes Antiquities lore look real bad. I'll tell you that much. If it's Esper Tinker, though, it's, like, not a very bad Saga hand, right? Just going Saga Soul Ring could be good. I don't know. I don't... don't. I guess we get to go turn to Jewel. I'm going to probably keep this hand. I think it's reasonable against what Medivh usually plays. Tinker Saga, Workshops, that kind of thing. Maybe this hand isn't super good against workshops, but. Oh no, it's oops all spells. Uh, all right, we're dead. This hand's not even good against oops all spells at all. <laughs> all right, well, we have to draw probably force off the top. Or I guess we could draw Moxin. And, or like uh, a good Moxin, like a Mana Crypt or something, and go for Jewel. Man, so many oops all spells players recently. Do we get a turn here? All right, we get a turn. So we have top decks. Force of Will is our clear best top deck. Some mana to play a jewel might be good. Urza Saga is, of course, not good. So I think I'm going to concede. Yeah, I'm just going to concede. don't really think it's worth showing them any of this. So I didn't really expect oops all spells. That was on me. So I'm going to bring in the same thing from last time. Man, we're going to have a really nice uh, uninteractive <laughs> YouTube video. All right, so uh, Crypt, Negation, Needle, Cage. And then what did we take out last time? We took out uh, Vault Key. And we took out Cyber Drive Awakener. And we took out... Uh, what were the other cards we took out? Did we take out, like, one Moon Silver, one Grim Monolith or something? I don't really like the idea of taking out a Grim Monolith. Maybe we took out, like, one Antiquities War. No, I wanted to have blue cards for Force, I remember saying. I'm trying to remember what the other card we took out was. Oh, Top. We took out Top. Yeah, so one key. Yeah, so this is going to give us more blue cards for Force. We have a couple cards that interact with the Oops All Spells stuff. And we keep Intranosphere on the play to just lock them out of the game. All right, what do we got? I have... Yeah, I mean, this is good enough, right? We're going to go... Man, are we supposed to play Metamorph on Ruby here? Or Metamorph on Jet here? It's kind of unfortunate. I mean, we have to keep it. It has Force, and it has Turn 2 Jewel, so we just keep it. <laughs> I think this is just what it is, what it is, and I just have to use this Metamorph as a Jet. And then hopefully they don't have combo with Force or, or Packed back up. And we'll play around trap, I guess. Or not play around trap. Play <laughs> play around trap on next turn. Maybe I'm not supposed to play the second. Uh, it's fine. So, like, if I draw a mana source, it's really bad that I lost my metamorph, which will help me jewel combo. But if I don't hit a mana source and I can't jewel combo, it's really bad for me. So, yeah. I mean, if they just have turn one combo kill with force backup, I just lose. Not There's just nothing I can do about it. 
I can mulligan to a better hand, but I'm not going to mulligan a hand that has force plus some combo element to it. That looks like it's turn one combo. You have force backup. They kept a seven. Yeah, wow. I mean, uh, there's not much I can do. My opponent's hands were just very strong. In my game one hand, I, maybe, I, maybe game one I can mulligan to a better hand, but I didn't really expect oops here. Man, oops is pretty lame. <laughs> Wish I had ley lines in my sideboard. All right, there's an Oracle. There's Dread Return. All right, we're dead. I mean, man, this whole oops thing has been uh, not ideal. All right, welcome. Round four, Vintage Challenge. Two and one. Up against Juju, the Zoomer. Probably on Esper Tinker. We'll see what we got. Uh, oh, man. This is a bold, this is a bold play. But we probably are just going to do it. I think this should win unless we play against a hand that has all lands, right? Like if it, if 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 Juju keeps a hand that's three lands Saga, we lose. Uh, unfortunately, I can't cast this Metamorph through Sphere because Magic Online is bugged. Um, that is an unfortunate part of this, and I also can die to my Mana Crypt. So, but I feel like we're just supposed to keep the three ball fo double force hand on the play, right? If this hand had an Urza Saga in it, it would actually be good. <laughs> Urza Saga, pretty nice against, with three ball, yeah. I guess most lots of cards are pretty nice with three ball. We do have to hit lands, but I guess we can play Moxin and stuff, so maybe it's fine. The only problem is we can't play this Metamorph. It's really frustrating, but I, I just that's the that's the way Magic Online is bugged right now. That would be really nice as a way to have like. A second, uh, I don't know, maybe second Mana Crypt is going too far, but. I could see myself losing with this hand, for sure. There are definitely ways we lose this game. Alright, we're doing it. Mana Crypt. Mox Emerald. Free Ball. Any forces? I'll force pitch Metamorph if they have force. No. Okay. Well, time to find out how many lands they have and if they have Saga or not. Okay. Tundra, go. If I can hit a blue land here, that would be great. Just play an Antiquities War. Coveted Jewel is not bad. I'm going to try to play this Metamorph. I don't know. Maybe they fixed the bug. They have not fixed the bug. Nope. All right. It's really rough for us that they haven't fixed that bug yet. Hmm. All right. Jewel is not a terrible draw. We get now opens up really good workshop draw. I'm like pretty worried though. If my opponent plays like Saga and then has another land, we're pretty pretty far behind in this game, right? Yeah. All right. It's looking bad for us. They have a bunch of lands. We need to hit our own land here. Yeah. Okay. I guess the good news is we can technically force their first play. That was the risk. Yep. Yep. We're dead. <laughs> that was the risk we took playing this hand out, unfortunately. Not much we can do. Just draw better. I think we're supposed to always keep this hand, so. 
Land? Uh, all right. I mean, it's just to turn too late, though. Because now they're going to be able to steal my jewel. They can also hold up force for my jewel as well. Really brutal. All they have to do, pass the turn, hold up force, and we are pretty dead. Would we have won this game if the bug wasn't existing? No. We still wouldn't have had enough mana. But... Still frustrating. Theoretically, I guess we can still technically win this game. Maybe opponent doesn't make a construct. Maybe opponent doesn't have force. Oh, wow. They're going to go for something here? What are they going for? It's kind of odd. So maybe that means they just have... Wow, really? Why would you do this? This doesn't make sense. Oh, okay. Sure. I can't really let that happen, can I? <laughs> I've lost another flip. Okay. Yeah, we are uh, dead. Very dead here. I can't really think of a way this game could have gone any worse. Maybe I have to let that resolve. I don't know. Make a construct. No construct. Does that mean we're dying? Why would you make it? only cost you one, two mana to make a construct. And I, I can't imagine they don't make a construct here. Pretty brutal to have four consecutive land drops from this deck. But I guess they do have a lot more lands than normal because they have sagas, right? 16 lands. It's kind of... You have to hope that Tornosphere is, you know, stopping a bunch of mana. But it didn't seem like that was the case here. Hmm. I don't think I would mulligan this hand if I were to go again. I think I would just hope to draw better. I still don't actually have the mana to play a freaking coveted jewel. It's super brutal. So they're going to go three mana. They'll have enough for five mana. They have eight mana or eight mana. Citadel? Oh, demonic. It can't be good. It's a lot of restricted cards. Can't imagine we come back from this. <laughs> oh, man. I guess if they don't have a land draw... Okay, yeah. So they can hold up Force of Will now, which means... Wait, they're not going to hold up Force of Will? What are you going to cast? Mentor? Oh, Lavinia. Yeah, that also beats me. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. It's so frustrating. This is like the single best draw in our entire deck, and we draw it after they play the thing that turns our total deck off. Okay, fun. Fun, fun, fun. Um, I don't know if we want, we might want to have, like, this member is not even good against Lavinia is the biggest issue. It's better than Slaughter Pact is against Lavinia, though. I don't really even know if I want it. It doesn't feel like I want it. I guess I don't really need Volt Key, though. Actually, I don't really know if, when I want Volt Key at all. Yeah, like if we draw any land on the first two turns of the game, we can cast Metamorph and have enough mana to go for Jewel without my opponent being able to counter it. Uh, even if we draw, like, Moxon. Yeah, it was a good keep. I think just bad draw.
I don't even. I, I'm not even sure Dismember is worth it to bring in against uh, Lavinia. I have to have three lands in play. Feels impossible. I don't know if like not casting Metamorph through the Trinisphere was like game losing, but okay, we're jamming. All right, we're on uh, make them have force here. I'm going to jam PO. Just need to use my mana efficiently here. So. Even though it plays into negation. All right, we are currently one mana short of a jewel next turn. We also have a backup saga plan, which is nice here for sure. Playing PO there also plays around uh, Flusterstorm, which is nice. All right, can I get a mana, please? Nice, awesome. Uh, I obviously I miss out on uh, the ability to play a Saga token, but I think it's better to just go for the win, per se. Okay, Jewel, draw three, Tinker. Uh, should I go three ball here? Feels pretty good, right? Could just go metamorph. It's probably good enough. Or jewel. I guess jewel is better than metamorph because then I can still draw metamorphs. I'm like a little worried that my opponent's going to untap and kill me with bulk key though. And I have um three mana moon silver. Maybe I don't. Three mana moon silver for a jewel. I do have enough to play as key and get a jewel and cast a jewel. I'm going to go for Jewel. Maybe that's stupid. Mm -hmm. I play a workshop. Mm. Play a top spin a top. Now I feel like I lost the game. <laughs> Can hit a metamorph, hit a jewel and a force. Okay. Jewel, I am two mana away from right now. All right, well, leave force on top, play another saga, and play a moon silver key. All right, I mean, I'm passing the turn with force, so that's good. Okay. Uh, I don't really feel like I need a construct in any way here, right? So should I? I should draw force, and then draw the jewel, and then make a mana. Get. Top back, I guess. Maybe I should hold that for... Maybe I'm supposed to hold that for... Um... 
Maybe Drawing Academy. All right, PO is going to be game here. Okay. Uh, oh, Hercules, sure. Oh, I guess I took out Vault Key from my deck. <laughs> uh, so I can't win the game now. I guess that's a problematic thing to do, huh? <laughs> I guess I'll just get all my things into play and then... I don't know. Oh, they conceded. Woo! Oh, no, I have a Karn. What's Karn do? Oh, no, no, no. I can win the game. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Know what I can do? I can metamorph their key and then Karn for Time Vault. <laughs> or I can Karn for Blightsteel and cast Time Walk, I guess. Yeah, I guess I do still win the game here. This is why you don't need win conditions. Just draw your deck, have infinite mana, and figure it out when you get there. <laughs> I did have I did have Volt Key combo. I had their key and my Volt from Exile. Also, Cyber Drive Awakener. Uh, I draw that and I time walk. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. I don't think you need Volt Key. Uh, I don't really like my options here in the sideboarding. I don't think they're good. Like, obviously, negation helps against their Tinker, but that's not really how they're winning against me, so. I mean, they can win that way, but, like, that doesn't feel like the avenue in which the games are playing are going to play out. Okay, cool. Game three. I really feel like we should have been favored to win game one. It just didn't fall our way, but that's definitely part of magic, right? This deck is so powerful. It's crazy. Yo, what's up, YCFN? FSN? Uh, I haven't heard from you in terms of a donation, Darkless. If you want to see something. If you're in chat right now and your name is Jacob Riley Sh Sh Schultz, YCFSN, or Nico. I got a, definitely got to message Nico Nico because they are new this month and I haven't heard from them. I'll put out another Patreon message today. Oh, all right. What do we got? Yep. Going for it. Please don't turn one Lavinia me. A classic Justin outing. I would like to cast my spells and hope I win. Yeah, I'll throw another message out after this. Woo! That is not the card they were looking for. Interesting. Interesting. All right, so I'm going to go... Am I going to go for a PO on their turn? No, I don't think so. I think I just run right into it. I, I think there's no good reason to wait when they have Lavinia and they have um, stuff like that. I think I will just run into the Fluster and hope they don't have it. I wonder, I could theoretically go Workshop Mana, uh, Manalith, which would give me an extra... Mana, but I have an extra opal, so I don't really think that's necessary. I'd rather have the saga going. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of like an all in combo deck. You do have lines, like, if I'm on the play, I think I probably go for PO in their upkeep or something, or maybe PO on their end step or something like that. Uh, but I'm on the draw, which means they can play Lavinia on the next turn, which I can't kill until I have three lands, which is not a good sign. So. Uh, let me actually play Opal first. All right. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to jam this. Show me your counter spell. All right, Buster Storm. The good news is that they follow up with a, a Lavinia. We have a Saga, so. Oh, Hercules in response. Sure. Oh, actually, pretty reasonably stop. Oh, it doesn't actually stop this. Okay, yeah, I mean, that works. I don't really think Hercules Recall is good against my deck because it's not actually good against the jewel part of the deck, but it is definitely decent against PO. It's good against Constructs, I guess. All right, they're going to go for Ancestral. They have a land follow-up for this Ancestral. They do. Nice. All right, I mean, this game is going to be pretty hard to win. My opponent has going to cast Ancestral Recall. I do have a Saga, though, and I've heard that card is better than Ancestral Recall, so... Small victories, right? Ooh, Cyber Drive Awakener. That could end up being really nice. Oh, God, they, think they could force this Monolith to keep me off of Saga Tokens. So... Okay, I'm just going to play Saga Tokens here. I won't be able to dismember if my Saga goes away, I guess, but I don't think that matters. All right, we just have to hope we don't get Tinker Bolus to Citadel here. That's kind of the end-all be-all. If we can dodge Tinker Citadel, I think we're in decent shape. This, uh, okay, so they are going to Tinker us. Man. I don't know. This is like kind of the problem with Saga, right? They just Tinker you. Nothing matters. Well, they can brick, so we got that going for us. We They definitely are going to die if they brick, though, right? <laughs> Come on, man. Why would they brick? Oh, they bricked. All right, sweet, 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 sweet. I'll take my luck. I'll take the lucky gains here. So this lethal, I think, right? Well, if they have force on top, it's not lethal. Do we actually want to make another token? I don't think so, because we want to be able to stand these up, right? So if we turn this saga into one mana, into a lotus, and then play in an awakener, or can we turn it into a sapphire? We can't turn it into a sapphire, right? One mana, four mana... Five mana. I have to turn this into a Lotus. And that will make... Uh, six... Ten... Eighteen exactly? Okay. I think that's the plan. No, it'll be seventeen. Mother... Really? Stupid Mox Opal. I mean, I think it's still the plan. I think we have to try to go for the win. Okay. I guess that's true, yeah. I guess we're going to lose to Hercules Recall here, but it is what it is. They have opposition agent. That'd be pretty bad. Yeah, opposition agent would be a hell of a bad card for me here. If they like cast an opposition agent from their hand off the black lotus, they hit off the top of Citadel. I'd be so mad. <laughs> so we beat Fluster and we beat Negation. So I take a Black Lotus. No, it's going to be one damage short. I'm going to be doing 17. Because the Black Lotus has to go away. Because I can't get Sapphire. Because it will only be 1, 3, 5. And I can't tap any of these. And I can't use my Opal. Uh, or I lose an attacker, right? So I just have to go Lotus and deal 17. Probably fine.
No, Soul Ring, and then I don't have a blue mana. And I have to. This Opal has to be a, 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 a an attacker here. The nice follow up, I guess, is that if this gets countered, I do have an Antiquity with War to cast. I don't know. 17 is still very good, so. All right, resolves. Do they have a Hercules? I guess they can have swords, maybe. Cyber Drive Awakener, sweet card. It's really unfortunate I couldn't cast it without losing my Lotus. Okay. Uh, your move, Juju Bean. We can still just lose the Vault Key. Time Walk, right? Initial prospects look good, though. Woo! Cyber Drive Awakener! Let's go! Cyber Drive Awakener! <laughs> I like this card. It's so sweet. I'll take it. Citadel does brick, yeah? Okay, here we go. Round five. Currently still in contention. We're playing against Mono White Luris. Um, on the play is a really important die roll win because we can look for a turn one kill. Our hand does not have a turn one kill. It doesn't have a turn one anything, actually. However, it does have sagas. Does this hand just beat mono white with saga tokens? They don't play cavern, so we can counter their first play, make saga tokens. Probably does, right? I think we're going to keep it. I can see this this hand beating saga or beating mono white via saga tokens. Could be wrong though. I guess theoretically, if we live long enough and our saga goes off, we can maybe get a blue source and play PO too. So Oh, this actually um wow, is this this actually pumps constructs. Right? Because it makes it a 5-5 five five with plus at 1 plus 1. That's kind of cool. Okay, we're going we're going we're a saga gamer now. I I I did a one hour video and now I'm just all in on saga. Saga all the time. All right, you have a wasteland? Ooh, for black lotus. I think I want to force this. Really don't want them playing two cards this turn. You have a wasteland and a black lotus. I mean, if they if they go like uh, planes, uh, okay, they have a wasteland. I was say like planes, Moxen, Kataki, it'd be pretty annoying, right? All right, so Opal is not bad. I think I want to play it before I get like Thaliad. Okay. No! Oh, that's so bad for me. All right, no POing. Only Saga life. Only Saga gaming now. It's okay. Hopefully, two Saga tokens or one Saga token is good enough to beat Mono White, but we'll find out together. Okay, that's their non-creature spell. They have the Kataki. 
Man, playing against Grim is a hell of a drug. So we can PO in our upkeep and play around Kotaki pretty well, but we can't play our cards back out, which is the problem. Don't know what my plan here exactly is. I got kind of punished for, I don't know. I feel like I'm supposed to hit the wasteland. I think I just don't PO. I think I just use my Lotus and pay for all of my artifacts and just go for two construct beat down plan. Feels like the best way to go about this. I said no. I have lost a Grim before by messing up Kotaki triggers, so. Cyber Drive Awakener. Doesn't really feel good on the current board state. I think I'm just going to get a Soul Ring. Wonder if I'm supposed to PO one thing? I don't know. Uh, I don't really feel like I'm supposed to play anything. I think I'm supposed to hope these constructs beat this, Kotaki. Uh, that's annoying. It's very annoying. All right, so how much can I pay for here? I can pay for everything, right? Okay, cool. I'm paying for everything. This is the plan. It's a good plan, as in they can't actually block with both. Well, they can block with both next turn. And... Okay, get in there. I wish I was drawing like zero mana artifacts to make this a stronger attack, but. All right, so they have to double. They have to block and prevent one, and then. Unless they draw a creature here, land plus creature. So we are currently still on board winning. They packed it. We're going to lose. We're going to lose to the stupid mono white deck. How does this happen? How does he do it every time? Okay, uh, we need to get a Manifold Key. I guess I could play the Cyber Drive Awakener, but I have to get mana for that. Uh, okay, so I'm going to lose... Well, I technically don't have to lose any life if I use my blue source. What if I... PO. So bad for me though. I just don't like it. Doesn't doesn't seem good. I think I take two. My opponent's gonna kill me with exactly one land. I guess I needed a force for that uh, so a path to exile. Oh, PO is such a bad draw. Uh, yep. All right. I what I really need to do is draw uh, more mana sources, like more lands. Another saga, another workshop. They drew Caracas. That's not good either. Okay, I could. Maybe I'm supposed to go for this cyber drive soon. If I were to like pay three and keep these three and then no, I'm st I still need to draw something first. I mean, I could have PO'd before, but I just it was so hard to rebuild after. I don't know. I didn't really feel like it was correct.
Mm. I don't know. I could I, I could be convinced that I played this game poorly. All I really need to do is draw uh, lands, though. Rim Monolith. Okay. Oh, I can't cast that. Awesome. <laughs> Super sweet. <sighs> I am not having a fun time. All right, what's your last card? No! Why is it, they, why does they always work? They didn't draw like double Kataki, double Thalia. They drew one of each thing. I mean, I have to keep what I have in play in play, right? I just need to hit like a Talarian Academy or something. Okay. Unfortunately, that does cost me life, but... Wait, does that even help me in any way? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm not supposed to take two damage there. Losing to White Weenie is the most tilting thing in existence. Okay. Another one? Now they can make one unblockable and one block forever? Wow. Uh, again, I think if we draw lands, that's probably good for us. Larian Academy is the best. Uh, I don't even think Awakener does it at this point. Might just be too late. Did I mess up when I forced the Black Lotus? I didn't really feel like it. They like didn't have the mana to make any plays. They only had one mana in their hand after Wasteland. Like they top decked the pedal. So it doesn't really feel like I was supposed to. I don't know. Is there any way I can still win this game? I think so. I'm trying to think of a way that we can win, and I'm running pretty low on choices. Like, if we drew Academy, then we would be able to play a spell. <laughs> I don't have enough mana to cast this. If I could cast this, I could make my Giver of Runes. I could make a giver of runes, but I don't have three mana, so I'm going to die beforehand. Man, that is just... It feels like we should never be losing from this spot, but... I don't know. I don't really think that makes sense. Like, we have to start activating our Ancient Tomb to do that. Which I like is going to lose us the game faster. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Too tilted. <laughs> All right. Dismembers, boats. I guess I'm not bringing in Colossus because they're going to keep in swords against me. Uh, or Path of Exile against me instead. I don't really want Vault Key. Don't really want. I guess three ball is good on the play here. Don't really want a top. I think I can maybe pitch out a Moon Silver Key as well. Let's do that. I don't know. It feels like if at any case we had drawn a land, we would just win. But we didn't draw any lands. And then after after the saga, we never drew another land, right? Maybe we were just supposed to go for like, um, you know, a turn one kill hand. Maybe that was the problem. Like I kept the hand where I figured Saga would win and Saga didn't win. So maybe that was like the misevaluation. I could have just mulligan for a hand that won on turn one. This hand is unfortunately one mox in a way. I don't think you can keep this. 
I want a hand that like does something on turn one. <laughs> what what is this nonsense? Oh, that doesn't do anything. Maybe we just mulligan and lose the mono weight. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I guess we're keeping this, but this hand is not very good. <laughs> I don't really have other options, right? I think it's better to play this Saga and go than anything else. Plains Pass is a lot better for us. Then, it's like a really good draw. I feel like we have to just be lucky because opponent's not playing Cavern in their deck, so we can actually force their first play. So this turn, we get to make two Saga tokens and then play a Coveted Jewel. Because we didn't get Wastelanded. It's really nice that opponent doesn't have any Archons in their deck. That's also a plus. That card is really hard for us to beat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, every deck in Vintage can high roll, right? Gak is definitely a high, has a high roll. Opponent is to trying to determine which of their plays they're making this turn. I think I counter actual factual any play they make. Unless it's like a Lubinar Gasper, in which case I can let that resolve. That one doesn't matter very much. So yeah, we're gonna go we're gonna go um saga, untap, saga, and then we get a black lotus and go ugh, for coveted jewel. That's so crazy. These are Odyssey basics. Not a bad choice. I don't hate them. Like, if my opponent had a cavern here, it'd be so good. It's fine. I mean, it's old border. That's something. What are we tanking on? Kind of wish I had a basic island I could get off a path, but I didn't put one in the deck. It's definitely a consideration when you have Moonsilver Key, though. What's going on? Hitaki, Luminarch, Thalia, uh, Leonian Relic Warder. I just can't, I just can't help but think I don't I think countering the lotus last game was good. It feels like countering the lotus last game was good. But it was pretty brutal like I guess if we didn't counter the lotus then they would like play what? Oh, a luminarch? We just let it resolve. I don't even care. How is this a vintage strategy? I'm just going to hold up uh, Dismember. Wow, we got played. I have to counter the first one too. 
So not really like worried about it. I had to do what I had to do there. I can still metamorph a jewel. Oh my lord. I think that's worth it. Could have metamorphed a construct maybe. But I feel like this is better, right? Almost had lethal there. Cool. <laughs> that was certainly a game of magic. I I do think we would have lost this game if we hadn't drawn Ancient Tomb, to be fair. We mulliganed pretty hard and ended up with kind of a non-functional hand. Ripping Ancient Tomb was very, very, very lucky and very good. So I do feel pretty fortunate for that one. Now we have to beat them on the draw, though, which could be challenging. Maybe I do want Tinker Blight Steel. You could say, like, bring in Needle for Wasteland, but they still have Ghost Quarter. I guess Trinisphere is pretty bad on the draw, so maybe we'll just bring in Blight Steel. All right, I would like a hand with Force and then a turn one kill. I guess you always want that, right? <laughs> I guess that's not something new. This hand is horrible. Mulligan. Man. Mulligan. Man. All right. I guess we're doing this. I think we're just going to bottom force and hope we don't get murdered too badly here. Am I supposed to get rid of dispel? No, I can't be right. I don't know. Maybe we just get rid of Jewel. But then why do we even have a workshop in our life? I think we're going to lose this game very badly, if I had to guess. I don't know. I can't really afford to get rid of any of these three cards. And I think we need the dismember. So I have to get rid of Jewel or workshop. I guess we'll get rid of Jewel and hope to draw something else that works. I don't really know how else to approach this. It feels real bad for us, though. Wow, no. Seven card Mox in hand. That's bad. Oh, that card. All right, well, that card doesn't matter if we get rid of our uh, our Jewel. So that does matter if we want to play Pio, though. Okay, well, I'm going to play out my Mox in and this stuff and hope I don't get wastelanded. My opponent has Wasteland plus like Athalia or Kataki or something. It's really bad for me. If they have a Kataki, I have to kill. Oh, they have Wasteland. It's so bad for me. Man, I don't know. Okay, I mean, that's it. No, no follow up. Am I allowed to dismember? Don't feel like I am. But it's really hard for us to cast P.O. if I don't. All right, I'm going to dismember it. Okay, uh, Mana Crypt. Mox Opal, so close. All right, unfortunate. If we had... Uh, no, it's so bad for me. It's so bad for me. Oh, they just put Luris in their hand? What is in their hand? Come on, let me win. Please let me win. All right. That should hopefully win. How can their hand be Luris Go at this point in the game? Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm definitely in the range of getting um, Mind Break Trapped here. But what I could do is I could go key jewel, right? Oh no, now I can't play a Karn. That's bad. <laughs> Oops. 
All right, now I can play a Karn. What can I do with this Karn? I, I am not convinced I just made a good play, by the way. I'm kind of convinced I made a very bad play. Good God. Um, how much mana do I have? Should I just play Karn and kill their Emerald? Should I just play Antiquities War? I could play Karn, not kill their em em Emerald and go for Manifold Key. I guess what I could do is I could play Grim Monolith and that is going to give me five mana and I can go Karn minus and get a key. That loses like really bad to Stony Silence, right? No, because I just go for Lattice on the next turn. Okay. I'm just going to go... Karn, kill Mox. All right, do your worst. Oh, wait, no. Stony Silence does beat Karn, right? Are oh, they just going for Luris? I fucked this up really badly, huh? I should have just gone for Vault Key because I forgot Stony Silence. Oh. If I have a blocker, I can go... Oh, wait, I can just still go Lattice, right? Because they can't kill my Karn with this Luris. I guess I also have all of these other things first. So let's do those first. I think I played this game really poorly. Metamorph as a jewel or Metamorph as... Uh, Metamorph Luris? <laughs> okay. All right, I think that this game was a bit of a, a bad, not a great play, but. All right. Cool. It's locked up. It's a weird hand they kept. They kept it on the back of Spirit Wasteland. Turn one Spirit, turn two Wasteland. But that was it. There was nothing else following up. It's kind of crazy. I'm interested to hear what Grim has has say about like what hand they just kept. Because it feels like that hand was a lot weaker than their other hands. I'm really upset with myself. I think I played this game very loose. And I wish I could go back and try again. I'm a little interested about game one. Maybe I could have played game one better as well. Feels like it went very poorly. But we'll take it. I think that matchup, like on the play, I should be pretty fine. But if I'm like if I'm pretty if I'm like behind on the draw, it should be really tough. So they have like a decent amount of cards that are really good. Spirit's quite good against us. Uh Leonian Relic Warder's quite good. Stony Silence quite good, that kind of thing too. Alright, good games with Grim. Okay, it's time. Winning in versus the uh, control player themselves. Control player, the control lord, the control king, something. Nox Tom. Been playing a lot of Jeskai, Luris with Wasteland, kind of the new way to play Jeskai to combat a saga metagame. Uh, my hand has. Uh, it's pretty interesting. I think we're going to keep this hand. I think we'll go uh, Saga Mox Key. And then if we get to go to our next turn, we can activate key play workshop. We're actually short. Um, but we could always like turn key into a soul ring or something. And that way we can use our sagas efficiently. Time to find out just how good their deck is against saga. How is the uh, frames? Everything fine? Everything looks fine. All right, I got a key. This is, uh, I'm on KCI, or I am on Coveted Jewel. I actually think maybe you're supposed to play Coveted Jewels and keys inside of KCI, actually. Now that I think about it a little bit more, it's definitely possible. We got a reader! Alright, it resolves. Things you love to see. Mistress Bobble, yeah, it makes sense with our Luris deck. 
Looks at my top card. Okay. Tundra. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, what do we draw? So they have uh, swords and fluster up. I kind of actually need to see what is in my opponent's... Okay, now they know we have metamorph. Okay. Let's go... I just want to go check out what's in one of these lists. I haven't really been paying too close attention. I know it's Jeskai, and I know it's Lurt. So three Ragavan, three Dreadhorde, two Jace, uh, Preordains, Prismatic Endings, Swords, Expressive Iterations, four Will, four Negation, no Fluster, actually. Only in the sideboard. No Pyro in the main, either. Interesting. All right, what is the best play here? I think what we want to do is go... Turn a key into a soul ring. Oh god, it like just exposes us to mental misstep though. Maybe we should just play Saga and make a token. I don't know. Uh so the biggest problem is if we use our key, it exposes us. So maybe we just play this saga, we make a construct, and then we don't make a construct with the second part of the saga, or maybe we do make a construct and just don't lose, we lose this part of the saga. Mm, I don't know. I Actually, I could just go for mana crypt, right? Maybe that's a better play. If we just go mana crypt instead. pretty hard for them to just counter crypt here whereas mental misstep for soul ring would be straightforward i guess it's not great for me if they do force this but we could follow up with saga key or we could go workshop metamorph or we could go Moon Silver. They're definitely thinking about it. I like that. Maybe I'm so okay. I'm definitely just gonna go for Saga here and pass. I think we should be able to just grind out them with Saga. They didn't have a wasteland for the first Saga, so now they're like a hundred percent. They need a wasteland to combat this. I would think. Okay, Mystical. They got Ancestral. That makes sense as well. It's kind of unfortunate that they don't have, like, March of the Otherworldly Light, because then they could Mystical for March. That would be an answer. But they're probably just looking for a Wasteland, right? We have, like, a lot of backup gas, actually, which is really sweet. I guess that's a, probably a, 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 a byproduct of Saga, right? Are they on any Sprees? They're on no Sprees in the main, either. So I think we're going to mow them over with Constructs in this game. I can't imagine they can... I mean, they could go for, like... Um, I guess they could have Swords, Dreadhorde, Time Walk kind of thing. That could happen. Just, like, a, a high quantity of restricted cards, maybe. Uh-oh. Black Lotus. This is just a Dreadhorde. A Dreadhorde here is, like, really good. Oh, they don't have a Dreadhorde. Dreadhorde would be the one that would, I would be worried about our plan. But, like, this is going to be an overwhelming number of Constructs. And the last time, they didn't have any Sprees in their deck. I don't think I'm going to play around Spree in the main. They did no dress downs either. They can play these cards. Spree, dress down, Puster, Pyro. They just haven't chose to do so. Um, I do trust their deck building. Like they are, they are the person who is working on this deck. They are the one who's putting all that all the work in. So, But yeah, they, a lot of the things that are good against us are not appearing here. Uh, okay, so I'm going to make a Construct. And I want to... Man... I don't really feel like I'm supposed to go in on anything. I feel like I just want to get a soul ring and then go workshop metamorph a construct. Or maybe I get a, a sapphire, not a soul ring. That'll give us a lot of extra play. Yeah, I really think we're in a good spot now. I guess there can be a bunch of removal spells, direct removal spells, but we'll have like a really nice PO backup plan. I think I'm going to get Sapphire so that we have blue mana. So 
So I'm going to play this Metamorph, and I'm going to copy a Construct, and then I'll swing in, and I think I'm going to probably pump by playing another Construct. I don't think it's really worth me playing around Shattering Spree. Like If I could hold up in um, Pyro, uh, Pio, maybe I would. I guess if they remove my Construct token, then I won't. I don't think it's worth playing around Shattering Spree or anything like that. So if we don't get Shattering Spree and they just like go for, I have to remove four Constructs, five Constructs, then we do have these nice combo backup plans as well. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly the kind of deck Saga is good against. It's very nice our opponent hasn't drawn Wasteland, right? They get Ancestral and didn't hit Wasteland. Um... I also think that there are no, like, they're playing two Prismatic Ending, right? You could play two March of the Otherworldly Light, which actually hits Saga. You could play Wear Tear. There's, like, a bunch of things you can choose to do if you feel like your deck is actually weak against it. Oh, they're actually playing four Wasteland. Three Wasteland, one Strip Mine. Interesting. All right, what you got for us? Luris? Yeah, I guess theoretically that's good. Rebuy Bobble and Lotus. Well, I mean, I don't know. I would just say check out the video that's coming on Monday if you want to hear about Saga. Because I talk about it for, for a whole hour, so it's a good one. All right. So my opponent's got Luris, but we have very large boys. Very large boys. These boys are huge. Huge. Huge boys. <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, What is this? Swords on a construct. Okay. How many swords do they have? They have two swords in their deck. And they had two... Okay. So they still have to chump with Luris. I could get a key... I could get a manifold key. I don't think that's necessary though. I think I want to go for like the coveted jewel stuff after this. I guess it doesn't really hurt me to get a key. Uh I am gonna play. This, make sure it's lethal, then attack. Oh, I guess. Yeah, I'm just going to play a jewel. I guess this could be really bad against um, Dreadhorde Time Walk. Okay, they're off it. Okay. Um, interesting. Now, how do we want to board for this? I'm not actually a high, entirely sure. So they're going to bring in another Wasteland. They're going to bring in probably Shattering Spree and maybe Swords to Plowshares and Pyroblast maybe. Um, they don't have any Lavinias, so we don't actually need Dismember. They have Ragavan Dreadhorde Arcanist. I don't really think bringing in Dismember makes sense. We could theoretically bring in Needle on Wasteland. I don't even know if that's that good either. We could bring in Defense Grid. We could bring in Cage. We could bring in Sky Sovereign. We could not bring in Blightsteel against the Swords of Plowshares deck. I actually think that Time Vault key is actually very good versus their deck, so I don't want to board it out here. Um, I would be interested in, like, boarding out Force of Wills. I think that's just not good, though. <laughs> um, hmm. I kind of like the idea of a boat, but not, like, a lot. Only a small amount. I don't even think a boat's a good idea. 
Cage? I don't really think Cage is. Cage is good against Luris. Cage is good against Jace. Cage is good against Dreadhorde. Maybe Cage is reasonable. I don't know. I, I have never. I don't have enough experience in this matchup to know. Like none of my cards that are typically bad are bad here. Like having redundancy is good. Having non pyroblastable threats are good. Yeah, but what's bad? Like is Force bad? Maybe Cyber Drive Awakener might be bad. I could bring in like Needle Cage Defense Grid and Sky Sovereign for four forces. It's like kind of an interesting. Yeah, it's like a mix of like what you're trying to beat, uh, whether you play Blightsteel or Sphinx. Um, it kind of just depends. I don't know if this is good. I'm going to try it, I think. I don't know. I just don't see where the force is good against their deck besides helping my spells resolve, but my deck is not very good at using force to help its spells resolve, right? So I, I just don't know if force is actually what we want to be doing against this opponent. Like, Force is probably good against Dreadhorde, right? But maybe we just play a Skyship and that's fine. Like, Force is also something that gets Pyroblasted. I guess they're only going to bring in two Pyroblasts, or three Pyroblasts, maybe? I don't know. I don't know how they're boarding either, to be fair. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll give it a shot. This is a really bad hand against... um against Shattering Spree, but it's pretty good besides that. We can go Mox, Mox, Defense Grid, Mox, Needle Wasteland. I guess we don't really need Needle Wasteland if we don't have a land, but... And then on the net following turn, we can go Mox, Mox, Grim Monolith, Antiquities War. Or sorry, we can go... Sorry, we can tap Moxes for Grim Monolith, Antiquities War. I don't really know if this hand is considered good, but I mean, this looks like a keep to me. I think, like, this would go pretty badly if we get Shattering Spree is the only worry. Well, I mean, if they just go Black Lotus Spree, we lose, right? Or if they just go, like, Valk Valk Spree. Not sure. Like I said, I haven't played this matchup. Jeskai has been pretty much off of the table, and this version of Jeskai is extremely new. Nox has been working on it for, I guess, not a pretty long time now, at least this whole month. That's a lot of results, actually. Uh, fifth place, first place in two challenge, two challenges with a uh, top eights, with one with a win. Oh, actually, there's just guy control going all the way back to seven twenty three, three challenge top eights. So, but also like a really really strong player, from what I can tell, very good at this kind of deck. All right, it's now it's our turn. Three ball. Uh, okay. Should we just jam three ball? I don't think that's actually good. I think I would rather go defense grid first. Three ball is a little hampering for us in this situation. All right, so they don't have a follow up. I think we just needle wasteland. I guess we could needle scalding tarn. How many Scalding Tarns? No, no, they have a good fetch land mana base. I'm going to need a Wasteland, even though I have no lands. And then next turn, we need to make the decision, do we play Antiquities War or do we play Trinisphere? Probably just Antiquities War. So this turn, I assume they will go for Dreadhorde. I mean, if they go Dreadhorde into Shattering Spree, Dreadhorde, Shattering Spree, I mean, that's probably lethal too, right? Technically, we could draw uh, P.O. though. If we drew P.O., that would be nuts. I think we just want to. I got look that uh, double double volcanic fetch. That's not good. If they just go, if they do have spree, what do they hit? Do they hit opal grid? Hmm. Hmm. I'm like really worried about this game. I'm not really sure that I like what I did, but. I guess we're pretty good if we have a like any land drop is really strong. It's nice that they can't counter anything, but I don't know if it matters. Like if they play nothing and pass the turn, or they play preordain and pass the turn, then I'm pretty happy. I guess Spree is still good through Trinisphere, unfortunately. 
Mm. I can't imagine I play Transfer next turn no matter what, unless they were to like kill Grid Needle or something. I don't know. Okay, here comes Red. Is it a Ragavan? Or is it a Dread Horde? Or is it a Shattering Spree? It looks like a Shattering Spree. Okay, Shattering Spree. That's what I was most worried about. They're going Mox and what? D Grid or Double Mox? Wow. All right, bold play, bold play. I need a land. Didn't hit a land. Okay. We had a really nice moment of opportunity there, but didn't work out. Now they have an expressive iteration. It's quite good. I mean, we have decent follow-ups still. Especially like a workshop. Ruby. Okay. Ruby Wasteland. Okay. Skyship. No. Mm. This happened already today where we got locked out of mana. Really, really sad day. Can't imagine we win this game, but we get to do another game. Maybe we reconsider with this defense grid stuff. Put our forces back in to try to kill him on turn one. Probably we'll try to do that. This on the draw thing makes a lot more sense than... Am I getting spreed again? They only have three sprees in their deck. All right. Ruby D grid. Okay. Well, I still think Workshop gets us out of this. Saga, maybe not so much. Saga would have been a great draw last turn and would have let us play Monolith. I guess at least our Saga is not dead. <laughs> but yeah, oh, they hit, exp I hit recall. All right. We are going to get blue cantripped out of this game pretty heavily. Kind of think if we had drawn a workshop there and slammed three ball, if it didn't get forced, we might have been in a good spot. Mm, hard to say. Is this a Jace? So they're going to have Ancestral next turn or is this a Treasure Cruise? Are they playing? Yeah, they're playing Dig and Cruise. Yeah, it looks like it's Cruise. Brutal. All right, they have nine cards in hand. Blue cantrips are quite strong. Our Saga doesn't get killed, though. Small wins. I feel like I'm just so scared my opponent will play this Dread Horde. I guess even a Jace is pretty good here. Uh, this is for Force. Okay. I went for dig through time. I guess they already have force. Land? I hit a land. Uh, what is the best play? It, they could just have a bunch of removal, in which case making saga tokens is bad. Mm. Just don't think... Three ball is good here. I think I'm just going to go for constructs. I mean, like, the problem with these decks is they don't win. So, yeah, we could win. My opponent has, like, 20 cards, and it's probably likely we don't win. But we could win. Don't really think there's a reason to concede. That's kind of the worst part about uh, old Jess guy was old Jess guy killed you by boring you to death. Oh no, they found their one strip mine. Why are you so evil? All right, I have a 2-2. Two -two. What are you going to do about that? <laughs> what are you going to do about that? I do also want to see, like, what other cards they have. Like, did they keep in Prismatic Ending? Did they keep in Swords to Plowshares? Did they keep in... Did they bring in Pyroblast? Like, there's a lot of things that I still need to know. Uh, and Conceding would prohibit me from learning them. So don't want to do that. Like, yeah, we're going to lose this game, but we might learn something important for sideboarding in Game 3. Look at this purple. What a nice purple. Does this put Luris in their hand? Okay. All right. I'm really... Ooh, they have Black Lotus. <laughs> True. We are so dead. 
Okay, so they kept in Dreadhorror. Like, did they keep in Ragavan? I don't know. I will probably concede here, though, seeing as they have Dreadhorde um, Shattering Spree. It's kind of not worth playing out. All right. I don't think we're going to see very much more of that matters. All right, so I'm I'm in for forces back in. Um, I kind of think Cage, Needle, D-Grid are not really... I mean, D-Grid might still be good. I don't know. It's just so bad against Shattering Spree. I really hate it. Uh, do I still want to sky? I don't. I just don't think that's the way we want to interact with their deck. I think we just put the forces back in and just try to murder them. They have six forces. Just do our best. Maybe we are supposed to keep in D grid. What would we take out for D grid? Maybe Cyber Drive. I don't know. I'm not feeling this. I'm not feeling the D grid. Maybe instead of a key. Hmm. I don't know. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's so bad against Shattering Spree. I guess all my stuff is pretty bad against Shattering Spree, though. All right, let's put in a D grid. And forces. Only the most powerful combinations. Game three, winning in. Oh. Welcome, 90s MTG viewers. We are currently playing winning in for top eight with uh, Coveted Jewel Shops, PO Shops. Agreed. And we're playing against Jeskai Luris with Wastelands. What does this hand have? This hand has turn one. Yep, we're doing it. Oh no, if this doesn't resolve though, we don't have any blue source. Ah, we have to go for it, yeah? We just have to take the turn one jewel and make them have a force. Right? There's no world where I can mulligan this. I mean, I do. I did mulligan, I did basically mulligan to four with this hand. So maybe I'm supposed to mulligan. This is a nice mull to four. I, like if we do hit an opal or a blue source, it is really pretty good post jewel as well. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It feels really bad to have three cards that are dead. No, they didn't side out forces. They're not dumb. Oh boy. Man, I don't know. It feels pretty bad to keep this hand against six forces. I don't know. I don't know, like, if it gets countered, I really can't play, right? I just don't have any follow-up, unless I draw. How many things can I even draw? I can draw Sapphire, uh, Opal, Academy is five, top six, one key, seven. It's just so little draws that are good. There are just so little draws. It's not, it's just too much. I think uh, eight on the Seagate, I think it's too small. I'm going to put it back. It's all like, it doesn't, if one of these was a metamorph, it would be better because we had to have a higher likelihood of winning. Yeah, I'm going to mulligan. Fuck, this is even worse. This is even worse. All right, five. All right, I mean, this hand is better. No, it's not better. <laughs> uh, this hand is something. 
All right, I'm going to bottom force and I'm going to bottom. Oh, God. Yeah, I should just kept my thing. I don't know. I got wrecked. I guess I can just bottom. I guess I have to bottom a jewel here. And just go Saga. Go. I, I, I just think it's really bad to keep the first hand against six forces. It just doesn't make sense. I'm sad though. That's a good draw. It is a good draw. All right, I'm willing to play a jewel here. And if it gets forced, obviously I lose out on a saga token, but maybe I'm not willing to play a jewel here. Now that I think about it more, I guess I shouldn't have played all my Moxen out into Shattering Spree. I actually think playing a Jewel here might be bad. I think it's probably better to just go for a Construct that I can get. I wish I hadn't played out... I guess I had to play out my Moxen. What am I talking about? To activate my Saga. Maybe I shouldn't have played out Opal. This does technically threaten PO, so there's something to be said. I guess no matter what, if I don't get Wastelanded, I can still play Coveted Jewel. And I could even make two Constructs and play Jewel off of a Soul Ring, right? Second Volcanic Island into what? Jace, that's awesome. Sure, I'm down. I am so down. All right, I'm going to make a Construct. Untap, draw, make a, that's not even a bad draw either. Make a construct, and then I'm going to get a soul ring, and I'm going to go for jewel. Does jewel resolve? No. Okay, good. I mean, not good, but that's kind of how I thought this was going to go. That does let them play fetch land into like double swords or something, but <laughs> okay. I'm just happy that if I had played jeweled and gotten forced, I would have uh, lost the game. So I just <laughs> feel like at least somewhat justified in in keep in not dying. Oh wow, they actually didn't have a card in the yard first, so they can't flash back this turn. That's good for me. Fetch land into the yard. Okay, and then what? I get answered off of one Shattering Spree, which is relevant. I technically have lethal on the table, though. They have to put out a blocker or answer these. I have a top. You know my card now. Okay, what do you got for me? Nox, Tom. What do you have for me? Okay, fetch. So now you have white sources. Uh, nine life. What is this? Time walk, treasure cruise, dig, dreadhorde arcanist, fair. Okay. Okay. Oh, I should have used the. Oh my god, I lost the game. I used the wrong mana and I lost the game because of it. <laughs> I'm so bad. I had to cast Sensei's top off of the workshop mana. And I used the Soul Ring mana. No, I mean, maybe they have Pyro or Fluster. Maybe it's fine. <laughs> uh, that was bad. It was a bad play, though. It was definitely a bad play. Okay. I will attack with both of these. It's pretty unlikely they have a, a removal spell here, so they will have to chump and they'll go to one. So there are no more fetches. They just have to find a shattering spree. Man, those are really bad punt. I guess they can now they can find um if they don't have if they have a a natural tundra, tundra 
They could go sword swords or prismatic swords, maybe. They're going to use blue, red for what? Expressive iteration? That's a good sign. Ah, uh, I can't believe I did that mistake. Pretty bad. Still in a good spot, though. We've got play. It's really rough for them now, though, because they don't have um, the ability to fetch Brainstorm. Sure, this looks good for us. We're, we just don't want to see Black Lotus Shattering Spree. That's all we're trying to avoid, really, here at this point. I guess Black Lotus um, Double White Spell is also good. Not a single White Spell, because they have a Jace. I guess they could also hit um, Double Blocker. But this looks good, and this is a good sign. There are definitely outs for them here. Man, I don't think I would have... Yeah, I would have probably have cast PO, right? I would have... Well, if I had played the top and the vault with the workshop and then spun with the emerald, I could have attacked and then played PO post-combat. Yeah, that would have been really nice there. Would have been nice. Small misplays. I think we might be there, though. We might be top eating. This deck is really good. It's kind of crazy. All right, what do we got? What do we got? Show me. Show me. Blo okay. Non-fetch. Oh, just a shattering spree doesn't do it, though. They have to have ruby or something. Okay, preordain. Great sign. They're looking for Black Lotus. They have to bottom their brainstorm, though, here. So bottom, bottom, hit Black Lotus, maybe? Uh, Awakener won us a game. Wow, got there. Got there, got there, got there. We'll probably end up playing them again in top eight because they had really good breakers, but... Oh, man, I'm I'm happy we didn't get punished for that misplay there. Yeah. Not much coming down the pipe. All right, top eight. Boom. Been a little while, but we take it. Welcome, everyone, to the Vintage Challenge top eight. We're playing Jewel Shops. We are... Five and one, not good breakers there, but Nox Tom and Discover N, of course, of course, Discover N. Oh, Sun Q, maybe Hogak, we played against Medivh, who was on Oops All Spells, don't know about these other players, just guy from Nox Tom, and I think uh, Discover N is on Doomsday, so a pretty powerful top eight. Uh, I don't know what break Brickaroni's playing, they used to play a bunch of Squee, we beat one Squee matchup today, but I would say that is a tough matchup for us, so it's a little unfortunate, but... Got to do what you got to do here. Interesting. Interesting, 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 interesting. We can go Seagate Key, and then we can go Talarian um, Grim Monolith. That's, like, pretty anemic, right? It does let us go, theoretically, if we draw, like, a box in or something, it could let us go Karn into Needle on... Uh, on Bazaar, which would be quite good. I kind of feel like this hand isn't good enough. I don't really like it. If I had a Moxin in this hand, I would snap it off, obviously. Um, or if even I had a Workshop, it would I would snap this off with Grub Monolith Key. I mean, obviously, it's like way better with the, with the Workshop. I think this hand is just not good enough. We're going to try again. This hand's so much better. Yeah, so much better. Uh, it's unfortunate I can't have Force Backup for my Trinisphere, but if my Trinisphere resolves, we're in pretty decent shape. I do probably want to play around um, Mind Break Trap, so I think I will just bottom this Force of Will and go Ancient Tomb, Jet, Trinisphere, and hope my opponent doesn't have one of their eight Forces. Four Negation, four Force of Will, four Force of Vigor, four Mind Break Trap. So they have to not have a Force here. They had a Force. This is unfortunate. Um, I guess I don't really want to play this Opal. It's pretty hard for us to beat Squee. Squee is... Squee is such a bad matchup for any non-Wasteland deck. 
yeah, I mean, I assume they were on Squee, but like I said, doesn't um, you know, not much we can do. We just have to play our cards and hope that we don't get murdered too badly. It's just really hard to beat this deck without Wasteland. Wow, they have a Hollow One Vengevine hand too. Force Hollow One Vengevine. That's exactly what you want to see. Um. All right. Well, I'm looking for uh something that lets me play Jewel this turn. That's something that lets me play Jewel this turn. I guess I should have played my Opal last turn to play around Mindbreak Trap. It's a little too late, unfortunately, now. I kind of just have to get wrecked if I do. Uh, they have Vigor. Maybe they'll hit Vigor in response. That'll be really good for us. I mean, if our Jewel doesn't combo kill our opponent, we do lose, for whatever that's worth. Uh, this is top eight. We are in top eight. Yes, this is actually the best outcome for us. Unless they have Force of Vigor and Mind Break Trap, um, this outcome is actually quite good for us. Oh no, it's not good for us because we didn't get to make mana. <laughs> okay, I'm wrong. Uh, we lose. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I am actually short on mana, so I'm dead. It's unfortunate. Should I have sequenced that differently? Yeah, I probably should have. I probably should have gone... Uh, I mean... It wouldn't have changed anything, right? If I had gone Opal and then Crypt, I would have lost Jet, made one mana, still not made my Opal mana. Might have been better. All right, well, this game is not over, over. I can still draw a Time Vault. Maybe I was supposed to not play that key, so I didn't get um, Mindbreak Trapped, actually. All right, Time Vault for the win. All right, we die. Uh, I don't really like the way I played this game, but my opponent had uh, turn one, nine free power, plus vigor, plus negation, so it's going to be quite difficult. All right, I definitely played that game poorly, though. Could maybe sequence it slightly better. All right, we get to bring in Needle and Cage and D-Grid and Blightsteel and Tormod Script, and we get to take out... Uh, time Vault, and Key, and Sensei's Top, and um, what else did we take out in round one? Karn? And maybe a Moon Silver, like that? Probably something similar to that. Damn. This might be a quick top eight. Might be a nice two-minute, two-minute game. Out of top eight. <laughs> This matchup is so abysmal. I'm really surprised we actually won round one. Maybe I was just supposed to play Opal in end of turn, and then if I play... I don't know, it feels like we're still going to lose to Vigor in that situation, but maybe it'll be slightly better. Huh... <sighs> Squee top eighting this event is interesting. Um, it's going to look pretty good into this metagame, right? It's a Squee top eight with the metagame being Doomsday, Jeskai, uh, Oops All Spells, Jewel Shops. Yeah, this hand's great. Can't ask for too much more than this. I mean, we could ask for turn one, but... I mean, this this Demonic looks really silly. And our Demonic... We've never cast Demonic, right? Well, they're playing Misdirection. Interesting. Uh, yeah, we're just going to go Monolith Sapphire and pass. If they want to P uh, Vigor us, then we will um, PO in response. Obviously, that runs us into Trap, but... I feel like this is the highest upside play we have. I guess if it just get, gets countered, we just lose. I don't, I don't know. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, I ran us into trap. Maybe I wasn't supposed to play Sapphire. I mean, if their hand is Vigor, green card, bizarre trap, I guess so. I, I, I don't know. What, what am I supposed to do here? I guess I could have just played a Monolith Go. 
I don't know. It didn't feel like that was a strong play. Five free power as well, and one squee. All right, how about a, a second workshop? Or I don't even know. What gets me out of this game? Craft Digger's Cage? That doesn't do anything. Oh, boy. Uh, I guess I shouldn't have brought Graft Digger's Cage in. Why did I Why did I bring in Graft Digger's Cage? That card's not very good against my opponent. Just stop Spongevine. I shouldn't have brought this in. I feel like I played this game a little too fast, or the series a little too fast, but it just feels like nothing really matters. Hey, look, Avengevine. Black Lotus Demonic, maybe? I don't know. The opponent's deck is just truly broken, unfortunately. The only thing that keeps it down is Wasteland decks, and we are not a Wasteland deck. So. Yep. Alright, so theoretically, we can... Oh god, they have double Squee now. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I was saying, theoretically, we could draw Workshop and then cast Jewel, and maybe we win from there, but that doesn't seem very likely. Uh, they just Noxious Revival to Force. Oh, they Noxious Revival to Wasteland. Awesome. Great. Cool. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, I guess they're going to play around Tabernacle now, for some reason. They didn't want to play around Tabernacle before. Does this give me enough to do anything? No, let's find out. Sure, they have a Force after all this, right? All right, what does this give me? This gives me Black Lotus Cast Jewel, or okay, we have we definitely have options here. We have Black Lotus Cast Jewel, we have Workshop Cast Jewel, and we have um, Talarian Academy Cast Jewel. I feel like Black Lotus is the best because it's going to let us. Um, play a land off of our jewel draw, and that lets us maybe play a PO off of it. Well, we're going to have blue mana off of our jewel, right? So I, I want to be able to play a land drop and cast PO. So I think I'm just going to go Lotus, Jewel, and then they're going to use their Force of Will and counter me, or their Mind Break Trap or whatever. Yeah, I mean, like, how is this remotely balanced? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's really frustrating but my deck is pretty broken too and we had some really good draws today so not much to really complain about we actually beat this deck in round one which is way higher than expectations but yeah they like i said this deck doesn't have this deck has two weaknesses and they are wasteland and tabernacle and we are not playing either so i kind of felt like my opponent had blue card force when they chose not to use this wasteland right so Anyways, that's an unfortunate way to end the really sweet video, but hopefully people don't get too mad at me for being salty. <laughs> I, uh... Okay. Uh, how do I feel? This deck is pretty strong, right? It does a really powerful thing. Um, it's really nice because we played against zero collector roofs. I think collector roof is one of the biggest problems with this deck, and if there are going to be no collector roofs in the metagame, then you're actually in a really nice spot. Uh, obviously, Squee is a, is a, is a nightmare. Not much you can really do. What you can do is if you want to try to beat Squee, what you can do is play more defense grids. Uh, you could play Ley Lines in the board. You could play Tabernacle in the board. You could definitely build this deck to be better against Squee. I don't know if that's what you want to do. Maybe the answer is like you're really supposed to just play like four defense grids. That might be the best way. If you like think you need to beat Squee, maybe four defense grids is the really way to go. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a pretty fun day. We did some cool things. We did some powerful things. And um, Ursa Saga was quite good today for us, which I like to see. Uh, Cyber Drive Awakener won a game, which was really cool. I don't know. I really wasn't impressed with these Antiquity Wars. I wasn't... Antiquities War was not impressive, and then it was super impressive, and then it wasn't impressive again, so it's kind of odd. Spheres? I think Spheres are just worse than Defense Grids. don't really like spheres that much. Defense Grid shuts down their entire deck. So... Um, I think you would just want Defense Grids. Like, I don't really think there are other matchups where you want spheres, right? This isn't really a deck where you want to see a sphere, because you're playing a, you know, a Paradoxical Outcome Artifact combo deck. 
think it's just like play more defense grids. And you could do that, right? You could take out, uh, I mean, Blaze Steel was good for us. I don't know if we want to take out Blaze Steel, but you could like respect shops less. Take out some Hercules. You could take out one of the Graveyard Hates. That's the worst. You could take out the Sky Sovereign. That might be overdoing it. I kind of wanted to make sure that I had as much counterspell or amount of, as much removal for um, Collector Roof as possible. We just didn't play against any Collector Roofs today. Yeah, I'm still not sure about this Antiquities War. I like that it's a blue card. I like that it theoretically finds Coveted Jewel, but we have just not had instances where this card has mattered. Not 100% sure about it. Could play more Cyber Drive Awakeners. Not a terrible idea. Could just play like more Seagate Wreckages or something. Um, could play like Probe. Could play Transmute Artifact, Ghostly Flicker, those kind of cards. I don't know. I was pretty happy before I played this event. And maybe it's still, like, pretty reasonable. But we didn't really run into the... That's fair. That's a fair point. We didn't really run into the matchups where you want Antiquities War, right? The idea is Antiquities War is both a blue card that pitches to force and a way to have more jewels. Because the biggest problem with this deck is typically you don't have enough jewels. Like, you play a jewel, it gets countered, you need to find another jewel to win. Um, and so, like, having access to more jewels is, like, really important. Which is why I really like Moon Silver Key, even if I board it out a lot. Maybe you could play like Thought Monitors. It's kind of an interesting idea. I don't know. I would be looking at ways to change these flex slots into different blue cards, is probably where I'm at. That's the only thing. Like, you don't have a lot of room in this deck to, to wiggle with. It's possible you want to have four opals too. But like you can't really cut blue cards any like you don't have enough blue cards. You just can't cut them. You're at what? 15, 17, 19? It's really sus. <laughs> super sus. Super, super sus. So yeah. Not great. Yeah, I'm like really uh I wish I had played the finals slower, but obviously I was like super sad. So apologies for that, but hopefully you enjoyed the rest of the stream. Hopefully it was a really fun, exciting experience. I think that was a really fun top eight in general. I had a good time. Um, new vintage videos on this channel every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I will see you then.